as always, please pause the video and try the question on your own before moving on. We can go ahead and draw a picture of the shot putter throwing the shot. So in part A, the shot putter is launching the ball with an initial speed of 15 meters per second at that 45 degree angle. And his height is 2.16 meters, or at least the height that he launches the shot at. And our job is to figure out how far the shot travels horizontally. And before we can do that, what we want to do is break the initial speed into its X and its Y components. We can see from the picture that the X component is adjacent to the 45 degree angle. So that means that the X component could be written as the initial velocity times the cosine of the angle. We're using the cosine because it's adjacent to that angle. And then the Y component is opposite of the angle. So that can be written as the initial speed times the sine of the angle. Notice that the X component points to the right so that the x velocity will be positive and the y component points up, so it too will be positive. After breaking up the velocity into its components, we can actually erase the resultant velocity so that we just have the components. We can next organize the information in the problem into a table. We'll take the initial velocity and plug in its x and y components. We could then go to the acceleration in the x direction, that acceleration is zero. In the y direction, because of gravity pulling down on the shot, we of course have the negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The displacement in the y direction is given as 2.16 meters. We have to make sure to call that negative 2.16 meters because overall the shot is moving downward in the y direction. So it's a good idea to call that negative 2.16. With the information in the y direction, we can go ahead and calculate the time that the shot is in the air. And to do that, we can use this equation from kinematics. And we'll go ahead and plug in the known values. Notice we're doing this for the y direction again. We recall that the initial speed was given to us as 15 meters per second, so we can plug that in. We'll then simplify this value as well as 1 half times negative 9.8. We'll have to add the 2.16 to the right side. And then we have a quadratic equation that we can solve for the time t. Our a will be negative 4.9, b is positive 10.61, and c is positive 2.16. And when you solve for the time, you'll get two values. You can reject the negative value. And so the time of flight becomes 2.352 seconds. And that's going to be the time for both the y direction and the x direction. So we can fill that into the table. Now that we have the time in the x direction, we can use it to find the horizontal displacement of the shot. We can use the same equation that we used before. This time the acceleration, because it's in the x direction, is zero, so we can eliminate that term. And then we'll plug in for the initial velocity in the x direction as well as the time. Remembering that the initial velocity of launch was 15 meters per second, we would get a horizontal displacement of approximately 24.95 meters, and that indeed is the correct answer to part A. Now in part B, we're going to follow the same basic process, but this time we're changing the angle to 42 degrees. Everything else will remain the same, so we're going to leave all the other values in the chart untouched. As before, we'll have to first calculate the time of flight. So we'll use the same equation from kinematics. We'll plug in all the known values. We'll use the quadratic formula. Again, don't forget to add the 2.16 over to the other side. When you solve for the time, you should get 2.245 seconds, so that's a time that we can plug in for the x and y parts of our table. We will then, as before, go to the kinematics formula, but this time apply it in the x direction. The acceleration in the x direction is zero. Plugging in the new time that we just figured out, we can see the horizontal displacement is approximately 25.02 meters. And of course, that's a little bit bigger than it was in part A, where we had gotten 24.95 meters. So the 42 degree angle actually allowed the shot to travel a little bit farther than did the 45 degree angle. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.